is the little Chamita River I'm crossing uh, over the bridge here. And we have had an astonishing amount of rain here. And yet, look, no sign of destructive flooding in here at all. None flash flooding. And just by looking around here, you can see why this is the case. Not only are these slopes gentle, but there gets to be enough rain here that we have a savanna grassland. And this grassland has not been overgrazed. Uh, or at least when it has, it's certainly recovered from that, that time. And right along the creek, we have willows. This is one of the most, well, actually, I think it is the most splendid grassland, savanna, I've witnessed anywhere in the American Southwest. I'm so appreciative of the Nature Conservancy that negotiated the deal with Edward Sargent, who apparently was the last owner of what had been a huge, huge ranch area. Uh, and then ultimately it was sold or donated. That's how the Nature Conservancy does things. Um, to the uh, state game and fish department here in New Mexico and turned into a wildlife refuge. This would be an east-facing slope. That's the one slope I haven't planted anything on yet. And the way you can find this is that um, I'm just off the main road that heads uh, kind of west, northwest through the valley. Uh, the, the ponderosa pine tree, the main kind of lightning struck ponderosa pine tree that I've uh, spent quite a bit of time around on this first knoll that's in the center. And right on the opposite side of that is the slope that goes down where a south facing slope. And on the left side there is where I planted the controls. That is with just the seeds removed from the berries and placed inside. And to the right is where I put in the um, coyote style. And coyote style is, of course, pooped. So that was my south facing. Opposite there, I had north facing. And out on the end of this here, uh, it's a west facing slope. And that's where I also did a coyote style and a control to go with it of the same genotypes. So I will first stop here. And in that areas, those areas right in the center there, not into the forest, but at the edge, just out into the grassland patches a bit, I'll put in some seed spit alligator junipers. Let's go. Here's the lightning struck tree that I've uh, used as a main point for seeing where we're at. Uh, the white crystalline rock is right there. And behind me, we're generally looking a little bit east, eastward, northeastward from here. Uh, this, because I've got some nice shade here, this is where I'm going to stop. And I'm going to take, oh, probably 10 seeds from uh, tree number four that I'd collected in 2015. 10 seeds from tree number seven, which has no expression out here yet. And 10 seeds also from a tree I harvested upslope from the other ones on the Cienega Bypass Trail. I hadn't found any seeds upslope at all um, in 2015. But this I harvested from about two trees, threw them together in March 2014. So that would have been the leftovers of the crop <laughs> from 2013 up on the east side of Sandia Peak. So I'm having three gen genotypes here, which normally I haven't mixed because I've wanted to test how well each genotype does, but ultimately if this thing succeeds and if climate change continues on and the Douglas fir wink out as the maps show that they will, ponderosa pine and white fir might hang on for a while, but uh, if Rocky Mountain juniper is stressed down in the lower levels here, it would be nice to have alligators here and with enough genetic diversity to have them reproduce with health. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to seed spit in advance all 30 of those seeds 
and then I'm going to walk out and down over to that side and do the east side planting. For seed spitting, I actually came over to this little pondy over here. This is the south facing slope, that's the north facing slope here. So this is where all the plantings have been done. Um, and I'll go, be going back over to that side for the east facing slope. But I wanted to just, while I was leisurely um, spitting seeds, I wanted to be able to watch what was going on over here. And you know what I saw? Coyote. It was uh, just loping across the slope right behind me from this direction, headed over to this direction here, and then I finally lost sight of it. It was just loping, but wow, was it covering territory. And the way I knew to look is I heard, I think it was a prairie dog, not a squirrel, um, doing the alarm call way over there. I could hear it. And there goes the coyote. So I'd say that's great timing. I was not only spitting the seeds, uh, but for tree number four in particular, the big beautiful seeds um, that I collected, boy, they were tasty. I had there was not a single moldy one in the group of ten, um, and so I I spit out the seeds and then I chewed and swallowed. I mean, it really is tasty. I was also uh, came out here this morning with no breakfast. I just had coffee. And I skipped dinner last night so that I could appreciate uh, the food value and the taste and the wonderfulness of alligator juniper. Again, one seed juniper, Rocky Mountain juniper like we have here, Utah juniper, all of them have berries that are just too ugh, uh, resinous. Uh, they taste like juniper. But alligator juniper berries, you wouldn't even know that it's juniper. So, time to get planting not coyote style. Seed spitting style, I'll call it elk style. Let's go. It's 11 o'clock, daylight savings time. So you can see from the shadows here what the sun is doing, what the slope is here. I decided this slope was just so gentle that there is no such thing as east or north or west or even south in some ways. Um, then I just decided to plant some inward a little bit, but mostly out. All of the seeds in this area here, right up to there. You see there's a large Rocky Mountain juniper right there. So about down to this level, uh, including, it's pretty amazing, Look at who we have here. This is a white fir, and it looks like it's doing pretty well. Look at that. I'll get around to the side here where it's not too much shadow. So, mostly out in the open, there's a lot of bare soil. I'll just walk around a little and you can see how it shows up here. Um, also with the rocks able to get some in and even even some in the total total shade on this side but mostly out in the open and an easy way to find this is look at exactly there and the roads over there somewhere uh, is a standing dead tree now that obviously that's not going to stand that much longer but um, it's just this one little nook. I decided to see, and also, yeah, right here. See this gamble oak clump in the center? Right in the top. There's a Rocky Mountain juniper sticking out the top, and its trunk is right in the center. So it probably got started maybe before the gamble oak, maybe after. But anyway, I'm testing out just the micro habitats here with the full total of, I think it was 84 seeds. So again, this is the big, broad valley that the horse trail goes through and 
the dirt road. Here's a way to find that exact spot. <coughs> Look at all the brown soil here. You should be able to see this from the road. There's that dead tree. So it's right through these Gamble Oaks. It's all that area you see on the other side. And the vegetation is similar to this, mostly forbs with a few scattered grasses. But as I'll show as I walk up, uh, the next area over there heading back towards home, uh, or rather up towards my pack, it's full of thick grasses and I would never try to plant junipers in there. See, here's the next gully uphill and over. These are dense grasses. You don't see wildflowers in here. Too thick. You wouldn't want to try to plant alligators here. Before I head over to the north side there, I'm going to stay in this beautiful shade. It's from here that I was watching the coyote. I could only see it to about the center of the picture there and then lost it up in that far area. Uh, but this is a wonderful place to separate the seeds from 40 more berries of alligator juniper tree number four, which as I say is the tastiest. And I am hungry, so I'm looking forward to eating the matrix of the berries and spit out the seeds, elk style. This is a good place to actually see where all the plantings are. Now the very, very first planting uh, I did that very first evening. Uh, exactly in the middle of the picture um, was where I was able to, because I had a nice poop that evening, waited it out, planted. And then the next evening, Michael filmed me over here, that tree there in the center, that, that's that, uh, that uh, kind of cut off dying Rocky Mountain juniper, but right in that area there was where Michael filmed me planting the next evening, and that was one I had to bring up in a Tupperware because nature called when I was still at home. Now, the other place where a huge number of seeds have uh, in several different uh, poop increments were over in this area, and even though you see that big ponderosa right there, I think it's that smaller one, which is where Michael sits, I sat and talked, and then I planted everything to the right of there. Some slightly up into that area there, and then around the corner, and then quite a ways up into the, that area there, also in the open. Um, and then around the base of this area here, and then a whole lot of them amidst that shrubbery in there. So that's where coyote style, that's where coyote style happened. And so what I'll do today is I've got 110 seeds that I'd already extracted at home. And I will plant them all to the left of that large ponderosa pine somewhere in there. That will be from tree number one, same genotype as what all of the coyote style was here, and that's what I've been doing. The only problem I have with this control is it's a week. I'm planting it a week after these already went in uh, with their little increment of poop fertilizer and a wonderful series of rains going on from the monsoon, just almost every day, really good rains. So this control will be a week late putting in, and I did uh, soak the seeds for two days during that time to hope to get them a little bit watered, um, but it's not a pure control. Then after I plant those 110 seeds, uh, the ones that I'm working on right now, tree number four, um, from 40 berries, that should give approximately times three, I'd say approximately 140 seeds will go in just down from there. The other thing I want to do, if I do it before the monsoon clouds gather, and it looks like they're not even starting to gather, is um, right at the lowest point 
there on the hillside, straight in the center. I think that's where the Elk Superhighway that goes right by that giant Douglas fir back in the forest is. And I want to finally get up there and take a look at what the top of that area looks like. So I will finish off my little project here. Finding it very satisfying eating these seeds, or rather the swallowing the matrix. Uh, and then I will continue. Okay, here's that big Douglas fir. Here's the Elk Superhighway, and it looks like I can take it up through here. We'll see. This is unexplored terrain. I'm grateful that the elk tend to do zigzag so it's not too steep, but look what I see right along the side here. Another gigantic living Douglas fir. Nearing the gradual summit of this ridge, so all the tall trees are ponderosa pine. This was a little white fir. There's some other white firs around. Gamble oak, ponderosa pine, and here you can see there's some dug fir and some white fir in there. What's important to know is that that north-facing side, the Douglas firs will probably be winking out really fast. And even the white firs and then eventually the ponderosas will go too. I'm having no luck topping out here and I hear some thunder. So I figured I'd stop at this ponderosa pine tree. You can see there's a peel at the bottom, several peels up there, uh, quite a ways up. I don't know if that was intentional, if it was made by humans, or just some other problem came in. Here's what it looks like down here. No Douglas fir at all. It's all ponderosa pine, grassland, and clumps of gamble oak back here on the ridge top. So I'm going to head back down. Okay, back to home tree here. Again, coyote style. Tree number one was over there a week ago. And back here, higher up there, uh, still in the sun, not into the forest, is where I started the 110 seeds control, elk style. But you can see right here, it's really grassy, so I had to go up to where I could find bare soil. You just, I think the reason you just don't see more trees down in here is the grasses get so dense in here. So anyway, uh, basically from home tree, and then let me walk over here on the Elk Road to where I get a view of the farthest edge that I went in. All through here, above this trail, some close to the trail, uh, but a lot quite back into there. And now it's starting to come into focus here. See that fir tree center there? That's as far as I went. So for putting in the approximately 140 seeds of uh, elk style of tree number four, it's going to start beyond there. But first let me go up and you'll see there's two fir trees very close to each other here. Boy, it was full sun the whole time I was planting. I planted some in shaded areas. Uh, all different kind of micro habitats, but mostly out in pure sun. There, you can see there's two white fir trees very close together there. 
and then up into that slope area. So that's the end of it that I had. The only thing I can think of that might be really a problem, uh, rodents are always a problem when you're putting out seeds, always. And uh, the problem might have been I was planting in full sun, so the palm of my hand got really sweaty, which means salty. So as I was putting the seeds in, I'm sure they had the salt smell on them. And boy, salt would be really valuable to rodents. So I put them anywhere from an eighth of an inch to about a half inch in deep. But uh, let's continue on over here and I'll see where I want to put in the final 140. Here's another way to see the edge of where I planted. I'm trying to walk into an area to see where I want to plant. And you know what? I think I'm going to start it right here. Uh, the fir trees were basically over there. But look at what's right in the center of the picture, that color green. I actually checked it out the other day when I saw it. I've never seen this anywhere else here before. This is uh, genus Prunus, either a wild plum or wild cherry. I would guess a wild plum. But that's a beautiful place to begin. If, if I can find area there that's not too grassy but it's got some bare spot, I'll do that. And then I've got quite a few seeds, so I'll probably get down, probably get down by those pondies over there. I'll get started. Thankfully, we've got some clouds. Wow, look at, aren't they beautiful? Monsoon clouds starting, but nothing that threatens, or wouldn't that be delightful to get some rain? Okay, so let me head up to that prune this tree and start planting. I'm almost done planting the 140 seeds. My husband is just coming to greet me here, bring me some water, and look what I found. This, I have not seen this anywhere else at all in this refuge. We have been walking everywhere. This is Juniperus communis. Oh my gosh, it is it's, I think it's the most widespread conifer in the world. Um, it looks sort of like a landscaping plant because it never grows tall stems. It just uh, stays very small. It actually has the juvenile uh, leaf structure of junipers. They, um, they tend to be needles and then they turn into scales later on. Wow, let's get the context for this here. Oh good, you brought me a peach too. Look at this. Must have been dropped by a bird, but I bet, <laughs> I bet that patch is way older than this ponderosa or these other ponderosas here. Really easy to see. Look at this amazing elk trail along here. And then looking back, looking back in that direction, and I've just been planting way up in here. This this area in here is where I planted most of tree number four seeds. They're really nice and big, beautiful seeds too. So let me look over here a little bit, see what we have. Some baby pondies coming out. I've just got about 20 more seeds to plant, so I think I'll plant them. I'll plant those 20 seeds between these three pondies here. I won't get anywhere near this communis, though, because I don't want to stress it. And um, then I guess I'll go up slope a little bit here, and that'll be it. That'll be the end. But let's take another look at Juniperus communis. So it had grown out farther here, but died back. You can see that. At least I think those are its branches. Oh gosh, yeah. Very, uh, very, very sharp needles. I don't see... I'll go take a look and see if I can find any berries on it. Because I do not recall. And in fact, since juniper is coming male and female, this would definitely be a clone. This would just be a single genotype 
from a single seed and then it's just spread out over the decades, maybe even centuries. I found two berries thus far. So one would think this was a female. There it is, over here. Given that this is a single plant, absolutely a single plant, um, where is it, if it's a male, where is it going to send its pollen to? And if it is a female, where is it going to get pollen from? So this may be a male tree that Jurassic Park style, you know, you got to find a way. We're right here by Juniperus communis. I'll have my closing words. End of project today. It's about 2.30. All the seeds are in. Coyote style, elk style today. And there are really four kinds of experiments that I have going on here. The uh, main one, obviously, is to see, at least in free planting in the wild, as to whether there's any difference in germination results um, for planting with the seeds first going through the digestive system, system of a mammal, in this case me. Second thing, and I'm, I'm less, given the weak slope that we have here, I'm, 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 I, I don't think this is going to make much difference, but here, north facing slope here, South facing slope there, and then over there we had the west facing slope. But I think it's more the micro habitats, being in the shade, uh, associated plants that you're near. It'll be something to watch for to see where the alligator junipers, at least at this climate stage, at this elevation, about 8,000 feet, um, and in this kind of a, uh, of a landscape, see how well they do in different micro habitats. So to keep track of the genotypes, just in case this becomes a population rescue, and there's a sense by citizens, like if you've loved alligator juniper up on along the horse bypass trail and elsewhere on the east side of Sandia, and then in the mountains slightly down from there, maybe you too will feel like as climate changes, you want to help carry either elk style or coyote style carry those seeds to places like this. And certainly, golly, in the decades ahead, these alligators are going to need to be moved even farther. So with that, this has been the end of a wonderful project. Please, any of you who are watching this 10, 20 years from now, if it's still available, uh, please do come back up here and check on these trees and see what else needs to happen at this momentous time in human history when climate change is happening just far, far more rapidly than these trees have had to deal with before. May the forest be with you.